and order. Uh, we're here for a budget workshop. Uh, one of the, I think the first first things we need to talk about is a contingency fund, and there's been some new developments in it. And Angel has had some time to really go over it, research it without with the outside auditor. So, if you want to. If you look at this page here, yes, sir. This page here that I gave you, at the very bottom, it talks about your contingency fund. Stop. This one. Yes. Okay, at the very bottom it talks about our fund balance. In the audit report for the general fund, the audit report showed the fund balance at the end of 2013 was $4,216,431. And then you estimate your revenues that you're, you're going to collect for the year, and then it gives you a total available of $17,861,497. Then you estimate your expenditures, which is $14,116,449.16. We made one budget amendment for the um, for the district attorney's office. And so then the estimated ending contingency fund is $3,731,499.84. Now this has been brought to my attention recently that the $59,606 that was in the road and bridge fund that you've already approved to be moved to the contingency fund, that was moved to the road and bridge contingency fund in error. And so recently it's been discovered that that needed to be done to the general contingency fund and not the road and bridge contingency fund. So that 59,000 will be moved over to the general fund. And then also it's been brought to my attention, there's $185,779 in the jury fund that has a contingency that that can also be transferred to the general fund if you choose to do so, but that needs to be done in the budget amendments at the next commissioner's court okay. for approval to do so. If you move both of those amounts, you can add $245,385 to your contingency fund. So that gives you an ending estimate contingency fund of three million nine hundred seventy-six thousand eight hundred eighty-four dollars and eighty-four cents. That was three nine seven six eight eight four eight yes. four. Yes, sir. <coughs> that number on here. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay, and Dennis, you go on and explain if we move, if we take up that shortfall in the budget, then we'll, then our big, uh, our ending contingency fund at the end of the 2014-15 budget would be 3700000 Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, to balance the 2014-15 <coughs> budget, it shows we need $276,055.66. We'll reduce your contingency to $3,700,829.18. Okay. Now, this could vary because these are all estimated revenues and estimated expenditures. When yeah. it gets closer to the end of the year, you will you will have a final number of how much you actually collected for the year and how much you actually spent. So the bottom number could fluctuate some. We shouldn't be talking about a whole lot, though, right? I would not think so. <clears throat> so you're looking at three... 3.9768884 in contingency. And then if you make up the shortfall that's been proposed, you're looking at 3.7. Yes. Do you, do you have the first number we had when we had our first budget workshop of what we were going to take out of contingency compared to 271,000? Yes, sir. 271? Yeah. I've got it right here. $271,706.66. I've got it right here. Okay. Two seventy one seven oh six sixty six. <clears throat> Is there any other questions about the contingency? Would you like me to explain um, this worksheet? We received additional um, revenue for our taxes. I talked to Alex Stevens on Friday. He brought me a new report. And it shows our estimated net taxable value now at $2,865,913.40. And 
$1,865,913.116. I cannot say this is one. And then um, <coughs> it, it's an increase of $7,588,971 from when we had our uh, budget workshop on the July That's the figures he's going to certify? He's already certified, yes, sir. But and these then, will be the corrected certification. That is yeah. correct. And then we have $1,988,200 still left in protest, and the majority of that is the Super 8 motel. Okay, so how, how much is that? $1,988,200. Okay, so that's roughly $20,000 of taxes if they lost it all. But that's not in our... our yeah, that's not in there. But if we gained half of it, it would be $10,000. Mm -hmm. And he also... Um, stated that there may be an additional minerals that we will receive. He cannot give us this amount. It's not in our estimated taxable value today um, because it's still, they have time to appeal. And so he said within 30, um, maybe 30 or 45 days, he can let us know <coughs> that is additional mineral values at $12,931,340 that we could possibly get. So that's about 80000 I calculated it 99% of $71,691. Yeah, 100000 100%. So, so he'll let us know <clears throat> about that. But. Okay, so um, additional due to the protest, additional due to the minerals, and then when we have our audit and find out what our true situation is, if we've gained revenue during the year and things like this, then once we have an audit in hand, which would probably be, what, February? Yes, sir. Then if we wanted to, we could come back in and make an amendment to the budget to get the contingency correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. And that's what I would suggest, that we wait until we have firm audited figures before we, uh, you know, make any changes to the budget. On the uh, numbers you have as far as uh, the contingency, mm -hmm. From 271 to 276, that's a difference of 5,000 or so dollars. Between our first budget workshop and now, we've had a authorization from the court to grant an additional position to the DA's office. Where's that $30,000? Okay, if you will look at this, this work papers on this sheet, this will tell you exactly what changed from the time we filed the proposed budget on July the 31st <coughs> till today. This one? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to read these to you? No, I can. Do you need to read them just to let the people inform of what changed? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. On our general fund, the estimated revenues that changed the concession stand rent $600, floodplain permit fees $11,432. Mixed beverages tax two thousand nine hundred twenty four dollars. The ad valorem tax thirty two thousand eight hundred forty four dollars. The fees and living taxes eighteen thousand eight seventy two. Royalties four thousand eight eighty five. Our tobacco state payments decreased three thousand eight hundred sixty three dollars. The liquor license permit increased three thousand four hundred eighty nine dollars. Jail phone commission decreased four thousand one ninety two. Housing out of county inmates decreased $17,008. District clerk fees decreased $25,014. The sheriff's fees $16,635. So the estimated revenue now is $14,453,872. And the difference between the two proposed budgets from July the 31st to, to, to today, September the 15th, is an increase in revenue of $834. On our expenditure side, the general services retirement decreased $858, and that was due to um, the retirement being calculated on the travel, the $6,000 travel. Um, retirement's not calculated on travel, so that was reduced, $858. The custodian salary benefit adjustment is $5,826. That's due to one of our custodians retired at a higher rate than what um, was the replacement was. 
And so we put that into the utilities in the maintenance department, $5,826. <coughs> the district attorney grant match is $30,892. The Chapey clerk salary benefits for three months, um, that position was eliminated overall, but it was not taking consideration that the three months she was going to be there before she became um, the JP. So that's for October, November, and December. The county judge administrative te um, technician salary is um, decreased. The after we made that adjustment and taking it out, health insurance, his budget decreased $4,601. The district judge court reporter and coordinator salary adjustment was $857. That's due to the fact that Tyler County did not give a raise on their portion of it, and so they're entitled to the amount that the, the other district judges get. And so um, Judge Stover requested that we increase um, our portion because um, Tyler County did not give a raise. And that's $857 for the increase plus benefits. So we make up Tyler County's difference? <coughs> request can you explain that he said that his how, how are we going to pay for something Tyler County is supposed to pay for is that right but he said his district judge court district coordinator and his um, court reporter should make the same amount as what um, Judge Thomas's employees make and Tyler County Lord, has not I mean I think my people ought to make <laughs> as much as Jefferson County makes and uh, so Tyler County has not increased their portion did you did you receive the letter that he? Received? I don't know, but I mean, I you know, if we're looking at what's fair and what's uh, judicial across the board, I mean, if that court is relying on Tyler County to, to fund part of it, I don't think we ought to fund Tyler County's portion. Period. I mean, you're opening up a can right there. <coughs> And it doesn't have anything to do with who the personalities are. But I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how we can fund something Tyler County is supposed to fund. Two separate counties. One of the things we might do is we might delay any decision making on this no, until after we set <coughs> our our rates will be. Yeah. Um, Judge, do you think it would do any good for you to talk to uh, Judge Blanchett and? discuss that matter with him I can talk to him yeah, but I, I don't know where they they're not giving raises we understand why because yeah. if you look at around us Jefferson County is giving a what two two uh, Orange County is not giving anything uh, Tyler, Tyler County is not giving anything do we have some <coughs> uh, I don't think Jasper County is giving anything either. Okay, no Jasper. regional planning commission giving about what three point three point four I don't I don't have anything here showing that we that three percent was figured into this uh, it's in this budget for the two for the 271 because that, that was the, the budget well I, I remember it, but I don't see nothing here showing that that, that was true and this number is south as JP5 mm -hmm. that position shouldn't have been eliminated part-time right? if we don't want part-time I thought we all agreed in, in our in our talking that that we would fund uh, a part-time, but not uh, uh, not this relief. Uh, it, it shows relief under there. I thought we all agreed that we would fund a part-time. That hasn't come back up since we've had our last workshop, Bobby. I don't think. Um, Bobby, can can I kind of put this on the side for a few minutes? What she needs to do is today is find out from the court. <coughs> what direction they want to go on several different items, and that's one of them. And in order for her to have time to prepare for the next commissioner's court meeting. So if we can follow along with why she's got it laid out, then she can check off whether we're going to do or what we're going to do in each of those and make it a lot easier for make her. one of them one time. Well, I, thought, yeah. I thought that's what I was doing. Well, you are, but you're taking it. She brought it up, and I just answered it. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll make all those adjustments <laughs> on the 22nd. At we'll, time. we'll file it. We'll vote on it yeah. at that time. Yeah. But today we need a consensus on each of these items, like Bobby's item and stuff. We we want a consensus so she can make that budget adjustment before we get to the end, because she doesn't have time to. If we go back and change the 
the employee raises and set, if you change all that, she won't have time to implement that for the first pay rose. Okay. Sharon, you agree on that? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay, and the county park supplies, we decreased that by $23,300. So the estimated expenditures today is $14,729,927.66. And that's an increase over our past proposed budget of $12,863. And your $30,000 match for the district attorneys included in that. We had additional revenue and then some of the cuts that were proposed offset the 30,000 that the district attorney's county matched. So if I'm looking at this correct, the total difference between the two budgets on revenue is eight, 8,334 and the expenditures is 12, eight. So we're looking at a difference of total over overall is Four thousand in the hole. Mm -hmm. Four thousand three hundred forty-nine dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, does this include the additional cuts on road and bridge yeah. that we looked at restoring? Yeah, it includes everything. Because I don't see that listed. Because we talked oh, about that twenty-five thousand. That hasn't 000. been talked about. Okay. And that's why your um, contingency went from two hundred. How much your um, the amount you needed from contingency went from two hundred seventy-one to two seventy-six. I'm the difference is the four thousand. <coughs> On the jury fund, um, basically we just left the revenue and expenditures the same. We just changed within the categories because um, we had additional indigent defense fund. We increased by 8,691. We decreased the ad valorem tax by 1,527, district court fees by 15,272, and attorney fees by 1,892. Roden Bridge. Um, the Avalorum tax increased by 9,713. License fees was 44,727. District court fines decreased by 22,434. Overweight axle fees in decreased by 9,713. JP1 traffic fines increased by $7,616. JP2, $8,733. JP3, decreased 10,834, JP4 decreased 3,295, JP5 increased 4,846, and JP6 decreased 11,893 for a total of the revenues 4,108,470 and the um, expenditures are the same. The budget stayed within the same, just adjusting within. And interest in sinking is the same as well. The revenues and expenditures stayed the same. We just adjusted the Avalon tax and the penalty and interest tax. Okay, now we're ready to take them up item by item, Ms. Forrest. Uh, we'll have it. Hey, how do they feel about it? Okay. And you want to get it lined out in your way? <laughs> okay. <coughs> Now, what we're fixing to talk about now, this will be the adjustments that we're going to make to the budget on the 22nd? Right. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. So you want me to call them back out again? <coughs> Approval? Well, let's make sure everybody understands. So, yeah, go back. The contingency, stand rent, $600. The floodplain permit, can we just ask if there's any? Well, if, if we got a list of it, then, then maybe we can just say if there's any question about any of them. Right. Uh, you're, okay, right now we're discussing these two pages here. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and you're asking for a consensus on it? Right. I agree to it. No? Well, we, we've already on the ones that I disagree with, I've already cast a vote in open court, so I agree with this. Are, are we taking up any new items? Are we, are we we're taking, gonna, yeah, we're gonna take up some new items after okay. that. Well, I mean, the only, the only question I really have is, is making up and it's not it's not a lot of money 
but it's the principle <coughs> of making up the difference for Tyler County. You know, is, is that the precedent of the court? Or are we going to fund 100% of that district court? And if we are, then let's just make that agreement and we won't worry about what Tyler County's doing <coughs> in the future. But I'll go whatever the pleasure of the court is, but I just have an issue <coughs> with, Tyler, with Hardin County making up the difference of Tyler County when we're having to give an extra $900 because Tyler County is not. So the question is, are we going to fund that court 100 percent or are we going to rely? Because this was real contentious last year. You, you mean not fund that court 100 percent? By statute, Tyler County is responsible for a certain portion. I, if, if I understand it correctly, we're giving a 3 percent raise and they're not, and that's the difference, if, if I understand it. And you're opposed to that? No, I'm not opposed to our 3 percent. No, no, I'm talking about making up theirs because they're not. Well, I mean, is that going to be the president of the court? Because if it is, then we can just make that adjustment every year I, and not worry about it. Me personally, I would say I would I would look at it individually each time it came up because it might be a different circumstance. Yeah, I, I would not agree to do that every year, and I do think that the uh, that Judge Carroll, we should talk to Judge Blanchett about the situation. Uh, I think the fact that the person is here three quarters of the time and they're up there a quarter of the time, they should have done the $900 or $600 or whatever it is, but realizing that they didn't do it, I do not feel we can hold the two people that would have got it uh, captive to Tyler County. Well, it's either it, our, the court I think either, it's pretty low in Tyler but County. But it's either not. our responsibility or not our responsibility. Well, legally, I, I, it's, and it's not And if it's not our, our responsibility, then I, I have no guilty yeah, conscience of not yeah. funding it. But if, if it's not our <clears> responsibility, and if it, if it is our responsibility, then don't even worry about Tyler County. And if they decide they want to give something later, that'll be on top of what they're getting. But I don't think it's if, fair. If the court decided to do it, which we haven't yet, but if we decided right. to do it, I would also suggest, you know, whenever we have, like, for instance, CPS cases and we're paying out uh, out-of-town court reporter, I would suggest let's use some of those court reporters that we're already paying up there instead of paying an additional one. Let's use them. And that right. goes for both courts. I'm not just saying 88. Let's let's use both of them. If, right. if we're already paying, you know, if we're if we're helping them out in a way, they could right. help us us out. Well, and my, my concern is we're sending mixed signals to the employees of the county because one <clears> year it's important, the next year it's not important. I would hate to work under that environment. I'd hate to be the court coordinator in that office, and one year you're seemingly not interested in the next year you are that's that's hard to find a, a way if i'm an employee to figure out am i doing good if i'm not doing good and i think the court now and in the future has to take a consistent point of view either it is or either it isn't but this one year next year not year yeah no maybe it's just confusing not to us to the employees and it and it helps feed negative morale. So I think what we need to be is consistent. And that's all I'm asking for today. If, if we add it, then we're going to add it every year. And Linda and them ain't going to have to worry about it. If, if we're not going to fund Tyler County's portion, then that's consistent with the law. Because the way that court's funded, we, none of us made a decision to fund that court that way. Well, that was a legislative decision. But we'll make the decision to fund their portion today. Yeah. Or not fund it. And I think if we're going to do it, then just be consistent. And it becomes a non-issue. All the employees of the county know where we stand. And, and then so they get mad one time or they get happy one time. But I think where Commissioner's Court uh, sends confusing signals to the employees of the county is one year it's yes, one year it's no. Last year, we had a, we had a, a heated discussion over those courts being full time and who was responsible for paying for who. And then this year, it's not important. Now, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not quite understanding. Oh, we had oh, those courts being full time? Oh, yeah. We, we had, oh, yeah, we had, we had yeah. a lot of debate but, about but, the DA's but, office. But I don't think that involved courts. the employees, though, did it? Well, it affects them. Yeah, it affects them. But because I don't think they should be jobs. affected by what – I don't think they should be affected by what their – the judge they work for does. It depends. I mean, if it's a 75-25, then we can't help what they do. Their beef is no longer with us. Their beef is with Tyler County. That judge and that yeah, commissioner. Yeah, I understand that. But 
I didn't but, understand what you said about we had a discussion well, I mean, with that court about full time, and we did about the performance full time. Correct. Yeah. And and my and my my deal is all I want to see is consistency, yeah. because we send mixed signals, it impacts employee morale, and uh, we we need we need to change. This court needs to change and be consistent. How, how many times? This is the only time since I've been on court. I remember this coming up, Judge. You? I think it's been covered behind our back a couple times. Is that right? Yeah. And again, it doesn't. Let's just be consistent. How, how was it covered behind our back? It didn't come to Commissioner's Court the way oh, that okay. I understand. Okay. So let's just go ahead. Okay. Well, you got to look at it this way, and this is just on the simple way to look at it. We're giving the court reporter a 3% raise to work in Hardin County. If they work in Tyler County, then they go by what Tyler County pays them, not what we're going to pay them to go over and do Tyler County work. That's just, that's just common sense. Yeah. That's what I think. Well, there's a problem in that there's a lot of lost time when he leaves town. When he a goes, lot of lost time? Yep. When you got, they don't have a, a whole lot to do when he's gone because they're not in court here and stuff. So uh, I'm thinking. Well, we can't help it because they've lost time. I mean, no, they, I'm talking about. There's plenty of work to be done if they get out there and do it. And there's non productive time. Uh, well, well is, is their time available to be used in some other way? Well, I don't understand what you just said there. I don't understand about the lost time. I thought we were talking about a court reporter. Well, she's not they only revert, they only work when the court's going on, right? But doesn't she go to Tyler County? Yeah, with him? and she ought to be paid by Tyler County's yeah. pay scale. But he's not paid by Tyler County's no, paycheck. No, his his pays the same back and forth. It don't matter whether he holds court or not, his pays the same. Yeah. Is it is it set up, Judge, to where Hardin County pays if I looked at the budget, correct, Hardin County pays their salaries and we're reimbursed by Tyler County. That's is right. that correct? That's the way it is? Yeah. Um, Tyler County doesn't, doesn't, doesn't issue them a separate is. check, do they? They get a check from Hardin County and we're reimbursed from Tyler County. Is that right or no, not? No, I don't think so. No. They get a check from Tyler County? For their portion. Well, if they get a check from Tyler County, then that pretty well settles it. Again, I'm, I'm only looking for consistency. Yeah. <clears throat> but Tyler County did not, they're not giving any employee raises. Is that right? So, I mean, they can't separate out us from them and say they're going to give their employees a raise and not give the ones coming from here a raise. Well, I've been told that they're considered part time. So they're not eligible for, I think, if it's my understanding, and you may want to talk to the judge there, that they give a flat, like $2,000, to the full-time employees, but the part-time does not get anything, is what I was told. Well, I have a little problem with that, because the state is one that said they are full-time employees to the state. I mean, they're full-time employees. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that they're only serving them one week a month, that's a state decision, not a Hardin County or Tyler County decision. And so I'm surprised that Tyler County would look at it that they're part-time employees. This is the, you know, that Judge Stover. No, I have no to. problem with funding 100% of the 3% raise that we're supposed to give on their portion of Hardin County salary. I have no problem. So we're looking at one total fee of $857. This county would be responsible if we pass this for making up their 3%, only $857. Then I agree with this minus 857. That's pretty simple, either yes or no. Right. So I, I agree with this minus 857. Right. Is that the 702 here that I'm looking at? That's their salary, and then you figure in the retirement and the um, pay. And that's where the $800 comes from? I can go with that. Yeah, we got to with with not we're we're agreeing to take it out, correct? Is that or you're agreeing to fund it? If I were looking at it, eight hundred fifty-seven dollars, I whatever y'all agree with, I agree with. But if if I agree to take it out, 
And I agree to take it out because that's Tyler County's portion. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think the judge ought to talk to him and tell him what confusion it creates up here. And uh, I think if they're giving their employees, you say they're giving them $2,000 across the board? That's what um, Judge Stover told me. That okay, the I think Judge Carraway needs to talk to him because I think they may have a state problem in okay. classifying these. These are full-time employees. It's just the fact that Hardin County and Tyler County share them. They're full-time employees. They're not part-time employees. And I think that Tyler County should fund them. If they're going to give their people 2000 then they might prorate that, do pro rata with employees that come from Hardin County up there. But I don't think legally they can separate out and say, I'm, I'm going to not do anything to these two employees while I'm doing it for mine because they're part-time. They're not part-time. They're full-time employees. Mm -hmm. And that's what he told me they've done in the past. I do not know what they're doing well, this, this year. I would like for us to leave this matter here until the 22nd okay. before we call the final decision and like Judge Carraway talked to him because I think they need to be pointed out the error of their ways. Now, if they're not giving their employees anything, then I don't think they have any obligation to give these two anything. And we don't have an obligation. But that's an issue for Tyler County Commissioner Ford. Because that's theirs. But if they're giving their employees something, but yet not giving these two people because they're saying they're part-time to Harden, I don't buy that. Yeah, I'll check on it. So we're going to leave that one in limbo. Andrew, you and I need to discuss this next one, the county park supplies. Yes, sir. I need to know. Uh, we need to sit down and and uh, figure because uh, we got the light bill and the water bill, and then we got the eighteen hundred dollar uh, uh, donation that the soccer club gives. So I need we need to figure out how much of that twenty three thousand that uh, that we need to leave in there. Okay. See, I can't, I can't do away with all of it, but we, we got we got to have some left in there. So you and I need to sit down and figure that out. Okay. Can we give Bobby and Angela a time to work it out and then she can yeah. go ahead and put it in the, the budget? Yes. I want to do that so. today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. So they will work it out after court, and then whatever they agree on, yeah. what we'll go with. That yeah, leaves just, you three thousand in there. Once we remove that twenty-three, it leaves you three in that line item. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, what about the eighteen hundred dollars? Is that added into that three? Um, it's just you originally had twenty-six thousand three hundred, and we removed the twenty-three thousand three hundred, and that leaves you a, a, a three thousand left in that line item. My question is. Is that eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> that the soccer club pays me? Is that figured in there? Um, no, sir. Mm -hmm. No, sir. <clears throat> okay, so that's extra. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean that. I guess I to answer your question. I guess it. I assume it because it's not in <clears throat> this budget separated. We do have it in the revenue side, so I assume it is not in. Okay, well that's not going to be enough because the light bill costs that much. So all we have is three thousand. We can not gonna be, I, th I thought you and I agreed on 5000 It would be left in there? Yeah. Okay. I thought that's what we agreed on. Plus the 1800 Okay, so 6800 is right. what you want? Okay. That'll take care of the lights and the water that we have to pay. Okay. Um, back to this Tyler County, did I understand? Dan, you're right that you think they gave a $2,000 across the board? That is what Judge Stover said in the past they've done. I do not know what they're going to do in this year, but he said instead of giving a percent. Oh, that was in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that's in the past, that they do not give. That's why he sent this letter out to all the commissioners and myself. He said because they're not increasing what Tyler County is not increasing what they're giving the two people. And so they wanted the county to increase their portion so they will be making the what, same amount as what the other what, what, what I'm 
trying to get to. Mm -hmm. What is Tyler County doing for its employees this I year? I do not know this. Can year. we find out? Yes, sir. Because two thousand dollars across the board would be a five percent raise for a thirty thousand dollar employee, a four percent raise. So that's a pretty. Well, the way he was discussing it in our meeting, he said that. Tyler County has gone this way to try to make it more equal for their employees because the percentage basis, the more you make, the more raise you get. So they're trying to equalize that. Yeah. So they're giving a $2,000 raise to each employee, and but their his employees did not qualify because they were part-time. I don't buy that at all. And I think that's an issue that needs to be discussed with the state. I don't think they can do that. I did call Because the, the state assigns the break between these courts. Now they're also participating with Jasper County with a district judge. And I, I just don't think that, I don't think that will fly. I did that call they, Because they, they're talking about two employees that serve that district court, that is the boundaries are determined by the state. Those are full-time employees and they're just bearing a quarter of their salary. I don't think they can separate them out as part-time employees. But if we, we check on that. I did call Tyler County to verify what they were contributing, and it is what's in the, listed in the budget. Okay. What they're forced to contribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think, like what is mentioned earlier, I think this has been an adjustment every year. It may have not been brought to your attention, but I think their amount has stayed the same, and we've just increased our court. Okay. Well, we shouldn't have been bearing it probably in a, They've just gotten by with it. But I think we need to call our hand at it. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Okay, so did we work out Bobby's situation? We're going to put $6,800 in there. So an additional $3,800 for you. At, at 23, 23,300 will be changed to 18,300. Is that agreement? Okay, to do that, that's only five thousand dollars. What about your eighteen hundred? Do you want that put in there? That's on the revenue side. It's not listed in a budget. It's well, no, that's, uh, that's just hope that soccer club decides to pay it. They paid it all these years, so you know they could bow their neck and not pay. So, okay, so you're okay with just being five thousand, or you want it sixty eight hundred? Let's make it 6800 just in case they decide not to pay. Have they indicated they might not pay it, Bobby? Well, they've been slow a few times. So I expect most any time. To well, what if they say they're not going to pay it? Whose property is that? It's ours. So if they don't pay it, what do we do? We can't make them pay it. Don't we contribute some maintenance and stuff down there? Or are we getting completely out of that? They do their own maintenance. Cut the water and electricity yeah. off. Do we pay any bills at all down there? Oh yeah, we pay for the concession stand that they use all the time. Well, if they say they're not going to pay the the fee, well, we may not want to pay the electricity and stuff down there. All right, that'll work. I mean, that, that'd be my thoughts. Yeah, well, I mean, we, there's a lot of facilities that for, serve us around here that could say so that you know we're right. not going to so pay at you. this point do we figure it in there or do we not figure it in there i wouldn't thing. figure it i mean it's change but i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't buy that approach that that the county is going to furnish them services but they're not going to pay anything like well, we've that, agreed to i understand that that ain't the approach i'm taking i'm just uh, uh, saying if they don't have to pay if they don't want to well i say they do have to pay it <laughs> I mean, we're furnishing them concession stands, electricity, and stuff uh -huh. like that, uh -huh. and it's our property. Uh -huh. And they just say, "Hey, we're not paying you anymore." Well, they could do that, but we, we, we could also cut it off. Mm, that's kind of what I'd think. So my question is, do we just let it lie, or do we figure another eighteen hundred dollars in? That, that's what I'm. That was my question. I'd say let it lie, and if it comes to that, we'll decide what All we're right. going to do. Okay, don't figure it in there then. So make it 5000 Yeah, make it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, Hey, that's what we're going to do to start with. Okay. That's what I thought when we had the other budget here. Okay, okay now we're, let's talk about the JP position. Uh, 
uh, in, in Lumberton. <clears throat> There's a new wrinkle that's been put into this thing, as I understand. Shirley, you're talking about placing, you know. Uh, I was wanting to place an employee three days a week in Seal Speed Lumberton and Sour Lake. And uh, Lane and I spoke the other day about maybe trying to cross train, and uh, the PSCA says no. Says you, you want complete strict control of your money and you don't want your employees having control of anybody else's. So um, you're not going to be able to cross train. So does that make that a dead issue, Judge? Kind of makes it a dead issue other than what uh, we're talking about, whether we're going to put part-time in there or whatever action we're going to take. I think that's what we had talked about uh, on a clerk in uh -huh. Lumberton, JP5, uh -huh. fund, fund Melissa's position through uh -huh. December and then uh, fund a part-time all year round, correct? Right, right. That's what, that's, that's yeah. been the consensus. And that's already in the budget, isn't it? No, sir. What's in the budget is a relief We've done clerk. away with that position. Mm -hmm. It was a relief clerk that's put in the proposed budget for just like all the other JPs have, just for vacation time or sick time. And so, and then um, one clerk um, position was eliminated, but then it was brought to my attention that Melissa needed funded for October, November, December, and that's what this is. That's the uh, mm -hmm. so 9,000. Correct. And so there's not a part-time position there other than just the relief clerk that all the other JP offices have. The relief clerk, though, that, that has been it, that's in the budget now, don't even take, it barely takes care of the time that, that the uh, other clerk would be off sick or on vacation, so. Uh, yes, sir. It, it, it's, it's. I think all of them are facing that, though, Bobby. Yeah, but <laughs> this one's got way on less hours than any of the rest of them. Well, I was told after our meeting that day that that's what the relief clerk is based on. It's based on the number of hours that that employee has for sick time and vacation time, and that's why it varies among the JPs. And so Rose um, told me. It, how much that JP's office, the vacation and sick time would be, and that's why it, the budget is what it is. Well, what we need to decide is not a relief clerk, but a part-time clerk. That's what that, that, that's what the issue is. Well, Bobby, would you have part-time funded and relief <coughs> funded? I mean, because you would really need it. No. Don't need part-time. No. Don't need relief. Don't need relief. I mean, don't need relief. How can you justify need a part-time part clerk at JP5's office? Do what? How can you justify a part-time clerk at JP5's and not at JP1's? This right here shows JP1 took in more fines than JP5 did right well, here. So let's put one at JP1, too. What sheet you looking at? Right here. Okay, the one, the one she, she gave us. Well, you can't justify putting a, a, a part-time clerk in any one. There's been two full-time clerks in JP5's office. All right, now, they take in more money than any other JP offices. And not according to this. But that was just according to the revenue budget, they yeah. do. That's just a... Yeah, that's just traffic. Well, the, the, the district, the uh, treasurer takes in more money, too, and they only have three people. Is that what we're going to rate it on, the amount of money? That don't mean they do as much work. Treasurer don't do... Uh, Hearings, trials, come to the jail, and, and uh, <coughs> the treasurer's work is lined out to do right there in the office. The clerk's office is, is, is everywhere. Let me ask you this. Well, Bobby. let's not pit the two against each other. No, <laughs> this is a discussion no, about yeah. <laughs> On your proposal for a part time <laughs> clerk, I could, I could go with you on that if we done away with the relief amount and all the other JPs budgets and let that part-time clerk travel around and relieve. We tried that, it don't work. We tried that. That does well, not then work. I'm against it. You so see, that office something? takes in approximately three times more than the other. Well, what about your, uh, right? let's oh, let the right. next JP talk. Right you, got, you got a copy of this form you gave me? Okay. But back to your figures are just fine amounts. For the budget year 
2013 and 14, deposits added through the treasurer's office. Judge Ingram only deposited 51,000 for the year. We deposited over 100,000 for the year. We did twice the money. What about coming down there after three o'clock on Thursday and trying to find somebody and they're not there or when they're in there cooking or playing games all day? That's what we're paying that extra clerk to do. We're there from 7.30 to 4. Oh, how many days? Monday through Thursday until noon on Friday. I'll be checking up on that. Yes, sir. I'm against it. So we need a part-time employee. What about all your evictions and stuff like that, Missy? I mean, that's how does that get processed? That's the total dollar that we've taken in. Do, do y'all comparatively, or y'all, um, is your is your caseload and workload more in, in your precinct compared to the rest of the JP's precincts? I believe so, yes, sir. Because I know y'all have a lot more apartments and what have you. I know, I know you haven't been to JP down there. You've, you've been the clerk, but I'm sure that your office is going to run maybe different than the one that's there now. So any issues that Commissioner Cooper's talking about could be resolved. Yes, sir. So, but that JP five does it serve all of Commissioner Precinct uh, four? Plus Keith Road. Plus Keith Road in my precinct. Yes, sir. So that one court serves more population than any other JP court that we have. Again, you're talking about replacing the relief with the part-time, correct? So do we know about a, a, a dollar figure of what that would be? I think what what we need to figure out is do we want to go 28 hours, 30, or 32 hours? See, that that's, has been the uh, hold up on <clears throat> quite a bit of this. Well, the Affordable Care Act's on 30 hours, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think you ought to go 28 and see if that'll work. We can always adjust it. I would vote for it for the one reason that court serves more population than any other court in the that, county. That, that's my consensus. And I'd vote for it. Okay, I'd vote for it. So. Okay, 28 hours, part time, 28 hours. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then the treasurer. Do you have a, a number um, yeah. per monetary? 13, 17, an hour. What, what, what's the total added to the budget, uh, approximately? 23,426. Yeah, 23,426. Well, let's if, see. If, if, if her figures is correct here. Yeah. How much Rose's is that? 23,426. Because part-time still gets retirement and all that, right, Rose? Okay. Part-time still gets retirement? Yes. Okay. 28 hours gets retirement? Okay, so it's 19 one and then plus all the burdens. That amount was 23,426? <coughs> yeah, get, 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 you pass it down to her. Okay, next is in the treasurer's office is asking for like three months uh, early that, well, 
they need a, an extra person for three months for training purposes. And then they want to increase their travel allowance by 5000 is that what it is? Not 5000 $500. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's for the mandatory training for the new Yes, for uh, the new. Treasure. Yeah. I had asked for an extra $500. And we were cut in the proposed budget. We were cut. We so restore it. So restore it, please. Because <laughs> Debbie has that week of school that she has to go for, to for newly elected officials. I'm for it. I think it was just I'm an for oversight. Both of those. I'm for it. What's the total dollars? It'd be 500 and then plus. What else was it? Three months. The training. Training. For another person. Well, yeah. we had 2,500 this year. So I asked for an additional 500 for that extra school. No, salary. that's the travel. What about the salary? Oh, the salary. The salary is on the back sheet. And we had based this on us getting our new software by October, which we're not going to do. So it'll be th three months of the salary that we see on the back. Yes, sir. Okay, you have. I so know. you know, if the court think, seems I think to think that's too months. much, two months would. You know, would be good. Anything go that you could give yeah, us. I'd go for three. All right, so you're looking at about twenty-eight hundred dollars. Yeah, you're looking a bit more now. Yeah, seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. What did I miss? Well, what? we had our total three down months, here for seventy. Months away. Oh, there you are. That's without the three percent range. You know, that's that exact. I was looking at the wrong line. That's just based on the salary this that's year. Seventy-eight plus five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, seventy-three plus five. Yeah, okay. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Okay. I'm for it. I'm for it. Okay. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> and next we will talk about the auditor software. Okay, this we talked about briefly at the last commissioner's court. There's nineteen thousand dollars for the training and um, the conversion cost. We can cover the annual fee within our budget. Um, that we have now for the software is just the 19,000 the conversion cost. It looks like we may have about 15,000 that we're not going to spend in that line item now and that's not in our auditor's budget. That is in commissioner's court under financial administration line item. And in that line item is our outside auditors and the um, financial software is coded to that line item. It looks like we'll have some money there left at this time. Um, just kind of like information only. I do not know exactly <coughs> when we'll pay the 19000 if we could just um, leave our budget as is and adjust it next year. When the time comes that we actually spend the money, um, then I said last time carry forward that money, um, which what it will happen, it will go into contingency, and then at the time that we need to make that adjustment, we can take it out of contingency for the 14, 15 year and just leave it as is right now. Sounds good to me. All right. And since we're talking about the auditor's department, um, our, our salaries changed in the auditor's department that's listed in the back of our audit of um, the budget report. The total amount did not change, just the various salaries for each person in our department changed. Um, the district judges gave a 5% to the two employees in my office and to not ask for an increase in our, our budget overall, I took a 1.5%. So um, I just want the court to be aware of that. <coughs> so our budget did not change. I, I, this personal opinion, I would say that is not necessary because the district judges have the authority to go up to 5%, and I see no reason that you should take a cent a, a, one and a half percent cut in order to balance out something that they have the power to do. My, my sentiments exactly. And I agree mm -hmm. too. Mine too. I agree. Okay. I agree. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to work with somebody like Angela. Well, I thought you were going to say me, Bobby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> okay. I, since we have Linda Davis here, I want to talk about engine health care. <laughs> When I go back and analyze the, the proposed budget, we're probably 100000 more than what we're going to spend this, this year. Now, I, Linda, since you're here, you might see, tell us a little bit about the future, where you see it going. 
up, up, up. Right. Terry was in the hospital one night <clears throat> for an arterial gram and a stent. It was over seventy-six thousand dollars. So you know we've had several over sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollar hospital bills this past year, and it used to be we're spending like forty thousand. Of course we don't. We pay what the state allows us to pay, which is not that much. Not that bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking. You know what I'm looking at right here. 18531. Yeah. The roles are increasing also. What I need to bring out is that we have an obligation of over nine hundred thousand dollars. And if you narrow that down, we're spending about three hundred thousand, a little bit more than three hundred thousand of that right now. So we got this huge liability hanging over us. Uh, now there's some things that that that. Linda's doing, one of them is, is the, the $2,000 amount in there for travel uh, to UTM Bay. What that is, is a contract with Jasper County where we pay them $40 for each person who dies with them. That count has not been used in the last few years, but you told me the other day that, that you've got one now that's gonna have to, uh, to go under that, right? Some lady's been treated. Yeah, there, there is, uh, we have been able to have all local specialists ever since Hurricane Ike. Used to, everybody went to UTMB. That's just the law of the land with Imogen Healthcare. Because UTMB provided the specialty care, the local specialists wouldn't. When Ike hit and UTMB could no longer, or Charlotte Hall provide the specialty care, we got on board with a lot of our specialists. Now, we have every specialist that we need so far, with the exception of EMT, there are no strokes. So there is UTMB, we're still contracted with UTMB in the event that we have something that we cannot get locally. And in the, uh, this past year, we had two people that went to EMT in Lee City, part of UTMB. But they did not indicate that there was a problem with them getting to UTMB. Plus, with Jasper Newton County, uh, very good relationship with them, but they had got down to where they were only going like once or twice a month, and the patients would have had to have had their appointments scheduled for them. But we did not see any issue with that because when we would ask the person, well, the only way we can get you with an ENT, we can't find a local specialist in Beaumont or Port Arthur, this area around here, that will take indigent health care rates. It's like they won't take Medicaid, they won't take indigent health care, so I'm going to take Medicaid. We asked them and said, would you have a problem with going to Lee City? No, just so long as you get me in with an ENT, I've got family that can get me there. One of them went twice, like to the doctor appointments at ENT, and they resolved whatever the issue was, and the other one has gone once, I believe. So there has not been a need for the Jasper Newton County Band. Now, I'm not saying that it won't happen. <coughs> if we have specialists locally that start backing out and not want to, Okay, and one of the reasons we don't use UTMB is because we're obligated up to sixty thousand. With that, for the other places we send, we're obligated up to fifty thousand. Thirty. Thirty. Thirty thousand locally, but with UTMB because they're a state hospital and they can do it, sixty thousand. In other words, someone going over there for a heart problems. Well, actually, heart problems I think is open ended. Heart problems and cancer is open ended. You send someone over there for cancer problems. It could go way out of sight. They could go 200,000. They could swallow up our whole 966,000, which is what our budget is, for just strictly for indigent health care client health care. It's not the rest of our insurance we pay. But um, um, yeah, UTMB, we, if we can send them locally, it's better on the families, it's more cost effective for the county. <coughs> Is uh, is the nine hundred currently budgeted? Yeah, 
in, no. in the no. Now, what, okay. what's our maximum obligation? Over 900,000. What, what percent? 8%. 8 of the general revenue. 8% of the general revenue. That's taking road and bridge and all that out, right? Right. Yeah. I, I would recommend that we reduce the proposed budget by 50000 and then uh, <coughs> prepared, court be prepared to pull from contingency later on if she needs the help. Okay, so we've got budgeted in this new budget 900000 No, we got budgeted... Uh, Six hundred forty-five. Six hundred forty-five thousand. Okay, because see, last year we budgeted six hundred forty-one, and you say we're we're at five about a hundred thousand dollars under. Yes. Yes, sir. We've uh, <coughs> we've been very fortunate uh, in the last several years. We're pretty well keeping it under three hundred thousand. And so. But we would, but by law, we would have to spend it up to nine hundred. Well, I think we just need to caveat, you know, make sure that we understand that, you know, <coughs> out of that 600000 we're still on the hook for 300000 And so even though we have this in contingency, just so that we understand we may have to pull three. If, if we're not going to budget the 900000 as a line item, and we're going to budget 600000 just so that we know that that 300000 may be, have to be pulled out of contingency. Well, it's more than three hundred because not all expenditures – like their salaries and all that are not included in that nine hundred thousand. Yeah, so so you're talking about around six hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't we want to budget it and then just be under budget, and so that way we know that money's obligated. And then each year put it in the carryover. Okay, we we budgeted six hundred and forty-five thousand. And we're obligated up to nine hundred thousand. Nine sixty six, right? If we stay with six hundred and forty five thousand, with the understanding that if we're under budget a hundred thousand dollars this year, then that hundred thousand dollars goes into contingency for future medical costs. And I think that's what we ought to do. Each year that we're under, I think we ought to put that in contingency and realize that the next year, any year, we can be obligated to the full amount. Seems logical. Yeah. Well, but would yeah. we want to budget it just so that we know that money's obligated, and if not, then roll it over to indigent care content. Because what, 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 what I'm concerned with in the future is we get so busy, we have these hearings once a year, and we forget how many corks are floating in that contingency fund. Sharon, what would that 100000 <coughs> bring? Brian, have a contingency be set deposited in the, in the uh, reserve. What would that hundred thousand bring? I think bring in we'd be better off to budget it low. Interest. Oh, not much interest. So low now. Not, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't make yeah, a difference. It would make money, would it? Take the excess. Not much. Interest is so low now. But we're going to get hit some. You can't even depend on the interest anymore. We break it down as how much goes in. In the healthcare. Yeah. My, my thought would be put it in contingency so it can be earning a little bit of money and then take it out if you need it. That's well, we, we always realize that if we have the medical costs, it's going to come out of contingency. That's the only place to come out of it. Right, so right. if we put any savings back in there, and that's another another reason for keeping the contingency up, you know. But if you add it into the budget right now, it ain't making a dollar. But if you put it in contingency, it might make a dollar. I'd vote but to your leave cash it. is your cash. I mean, <laughs> the, that figure that I give you on cash is regardless yeah, where it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the total it's amount of cash, and it all draws in. <clears throat> right. With that, can we make what I'm getting at? Do you make five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars, or mm, it's not much? <laughs> Angela, do you think we could get a quarterly report on the contingency as we, you know through the year we're taking? Well, out it's on. Stuff? It's on the monthly, huh? You're talking about you're taking out of the contingency? Oh, well, trying, I mean, to, trying to keep a separate well, deal just, of how much we put back so in Just so every there. quarter we know exactly where the contingency is. Why? I'd just do it at the end of the year or something. I mean, Why would we need to know that month to month? I mean, just we sure needed to know when we started these hearings. Yeah, but we've got an auditor now. Well, I understand <clears> that. And what I'd like to see is what we're doing, theoretically, you're committing 300000 300000 out of contingency to indigent health, you got mold remediation, 
you got all these issues coming in contingency. And what I'd like to know is what is if you got three point seven million in contingency, what is it what is it that you have hanging around that contingency? Well the, the easiest way is gonna be And what are we spending? Is every year you can look at what your obligation is. And you can look at what your budget is, and the difference is going to be what you could be hit out of contingency each year. And I, and I, I just think that we have to have a firm understanding of that when we vote on this budget. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's always, uh, you know, I mean, that's always been the situation is that it's the only obligation that we have legally that can come up and, and have to come out of contingency. Anything else we can control or might, you know, might not control a hurricane or something, but every year we've known that that's the top figure. It, it's, it's, it's there. It's just that we've had people that manage it and we didn't ever use it. Right. But somewhere along the line, you know, it's, you're going to hit it. Right. I, don't, I don't think we need a monthly report. I didn't say monthly, but a quarterly report. Well, a quarter. Nice. I don't, but I, I, don't think I, I can just call you. I mean, you don't yeah. have to get yeah, you I can just, call you, communicate yeah. with you. Well, the software is going to take care of that problem on a monthly basis. And you have to vote to yeah. take anything out of contingency. Right. It can't be removed without a vote. Right. So we're going to leave the 645 just as that is. You said minus 50, right? I said minus 50, but I'm. That'd be 595. <coughs> Whatever. It makes no difference what it said at. That's going to. So reduce it by 50,000? Yeah. And that fifty thousand will automatically go to contingency, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Unless we spend it putting around there. And Linda, we <laughs> need. <laughs> you, I need for you to look at that proposed budget, reduce the line items to get to that fifty thousand, and then I mean, give it to her as soon as you can. Fifty thousand. Yeah. Fifty thousand off of the nine sixty six. No, no, no. Fifty thousand off the six hundred and forty five. Yeah, ain't got the whole on the budget. Your budget. Your budget's at six hundred forty five thousand. I have submitted well, the 645, we want to reduce that by 50,000, and you need to help find the line items to okay. make, that, make that adjustment. Okay, so I need to just change my figure from 966 to 645, and deduct 50,000 off of that. And let her know as okay. soon as you possibly can so that she can make the adjustment. And if things keep flowing like they are at the end of the year, there'd be about a hundred thousand that'll <coughs> flow into next year's contingency. Right. Okay. Okay. And the sheriff's office has is, is, is got some information on the dispatcher. Yes, sir. As you all know, we've approached every city and uh, municipality in the county, uh, Battle Lake, Robinson, and Queens, as well as two ES ESC districts, <coughs> asking for dispatcher help. Uh, wanted to change the two part time to full time and add one more full time. Oh, yeah. Give us eight full time dispatchers. That would be two on, two on duty most of the time, not all the time. Obviously, when someone took vacation, sick, or whatever, we would still be short and we'd be short some other hours, we morning hour out. We uh, fell short with Lumberton and uh, Coons. They did not come up with what we presumed we'd ask for. Uh, we came up with 171000 Fifty-two dollars out of uh, asking one hundred seventy-three thousand four hundred four dollars, so we're two thousand three hundred fifty-two dollars forty-nine cents short of making all those positions we wanted to make. So, uh, yeah, and I do want to note that Sour Lake actually gave us more than we asked for. So we appreciate that, but it still didn't make the difference up that we needed. So I'm asking for two thousand three hundred fifty-two dollars forty-nine cents addition. Make those three, two part time positions full time and one additional full time position. The county would end up paying seventy eight thousand one hundred and forty one dollars <coughs> out of that that hundred and seventy three thousand four hundred four dollars that we were asking for. Which part that's already in the budget? To be correct. What, what two places did not participate, sir? The Lumberton. ones you said brought in all that money down there in Lumberton. Lumberton and Coons. Lumberton came up uh, roughly about 4,000 short. Coons came up about 3,000, a little over 3,000 short. What I would do in the future, Sheriff, if I was you, is stop providing services for them if they don't want to pay. 
Well, that's putting human beings in jeopardy. Yeah, that's kind of a. But we've had conversations with them, and they've just got some reason for not wanting to do it. I went before uh, Wayne and I, and I went, went before the city council. Wayne on all the footwork. He did all the work on this. But we, we both approached all entities, uh, spoke to them directly, told them our situation, our problem. Uh, I'm going to be straight with you. That out of that $173,404, I think those entities ought to pay every bit of it. I don't think the county ought to pay any of that because these additions are for them, not us. Yeah, yeah. That's my real sentiment, but uh, that's poor politics. And uh, <clears throat> every four years, so that won't go over real well either. So, was there a chance we can go back annually, ask them to increase a little bit? We could. Well, those raises are given. We're going to have to ask for those increases anyway. Yeah. And we told them that up front that the future would be different each year. It would be beneficial, beneficial, and Wayne and I have talked about this to have, <coughs> have a central dispatch like Mid County does. I mean, that would cut down on the county's portion and each city's portion and everywhere else where everybody contributed to personnel and have it centrally located where it dispatched for all EMS, all fire, all law enforcement. That's but, the way we approached the whole thing yeah. at first. Uh, Silby was not interested in doing away with their dispatch and joining that type of So we, we, we ousted Silby immediately because they do all their own dispatching for their fire police EMS. So we just concentrated on Lumpkin, Sour Lake, and Coots and the two large ESD districts, which is Sour Lake and, and uh, Lumpton. And, and again, I want to commend Sour Lake ESD district and their city for not balking a bit and coming across the really and then also the ESD district in Lumpton. And it's a, <clears throat> when you replace the people that are leaving, they go on and become politicians. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a rush of that this year. Yeah, sure. <laughs> when you do that, are we going to be replacing those people at the same salaries that, that you got now? We don't know what we'll be hiring in the way of certificate level pay. <coughs> uh, some of the applicants that we're looking at right now have master certifications, uh, uh, advanced certifications, so it, uh, it depends. <coughs> we'll be re uh, one of them is two of them are sergeants, so we'll be replacing them as sergeants. Uh, we will not be replacing captain as a captain but that that person has a master certification versus basic intermediate advanced the salary will be different just trying to find the dollar and the additional is two thousand three hundred fifty two dollars for the additional from that dispatch yes sir. i don't think we have any choice to add that in there's still citizens of hardin county and uh yeah and, i mean the benefit is too when we was looking at the affordable care act I mean, you're, you're already dependent on those two part-time primary, I mean, so it would really be beneficial to the county, too. We would be lowering them next year. <coughs> we would either be lowering them or we would have to bring them full-time anyway. Yeah, and One they year. were... Let's make that decision next year anyway. Well, we were only, I think, about eight hours off, really, wasn't we? Yeah, so I'd go for it. I'm for it. I'm for it. <coughs> okay, let's, let's talk about the... Grand jury bailiff. Uh, uh -oh. We uh, have to set the salary on that that position. Uh, can, what all <coughs> job functions does the grand jury bailiff fulfill? I've I've heard they serve papers. Can anybody kind of give me some direction on what they do? I know they advise <coughs> the grand jury. And they bring evidence before the grand jury, but outside of that. When the new grand jury is seated, I believe, well, the sheriff could correct me if I'm wrong, they have to, uh, the judge comes up with a pool of people, and that bailiff has to serve subpoenas for the ones that are potential. We do that. We do that. We do that. Yes. What? The grand jury bailiff, among things other than maybe asked to do by the grand jury, which is unbeknownst to me, uh, they preside with the grand jury up there to keep the peace and whatever up there and do whatever the, the jury needs them to do or the district attorney needs them to do. Uh, and then they also serve the, the subpoenas for those that may be coming for call before the grand jury. So whether that be officers, individual citizens, or whatever, they can serve those. So it's on the time to come in. Things, I'm not sure other than what the, the jury foreman has the authority to ask them to do things, so does the district attorney's office. So on time commitment, what are we looking at? Their, their time commitment per month. 
they meet once a month, so that may be a day, all day. And outside of outside of that, that it's a, basically a one day a month. Day. I have yet to see a statute, and I do have a statute that Miss Ford gave us from the district judge. But I have yet to see a statute where it says the bailiff can't be a peace officer. Uh, I think they have a statute on that. Where is it? Because I asked the county attorney and the district judge's office to provide that for me, and I haven't seen it. Uh, I heard that the district judge had got an attorney general's opinion. Okay, this has come out of... That uh, a peace officer could not... Someone that was going to file a case with a grand jury couldn't be the grand jury bailiff. Well, I mean, yes. if, if all we're doing today is setting a salary, then I think it would be up to if that current grand jury foreman resigned <coughs> in protest of the salary. We're not replacing him. We're, just, we're just reducing the salary. Yeah. So, I mean, all, all that other stuff can be taken up later, I think. But right now we're just looking at salary, and then it would be up to that current grand jury foreman if he would serve for that. Because don't we have someone you as mean a grand jury foreman? You mean bailiff? In our, we don't get a foreman. Bailiff. In yeah. our first workshop, we'd done away with the line item for that <coughs> position and said that the, the sheriff's office would provide the uh, bailiff. So I guess what we need to do today is set a salary for the bailiff. What was it? I'm looking for is it? 14, it's on page 55. $14,022. Okay, so, so, so my question would be, are we going to do away with it and then compensate the sheriff's office? I, I don't well, according to what they're or, saying, the sheriff's office can't do it. Okay. I was told by district judge they'd got an attorney general's opinion. He said that anyone who comes before the grand jury to produce evidence or file charges cannot serve as a bailiff. You have any different? Yeah, okay. So then we're looking That's at what the That's what I was told yeah. but I hadn't seen it. Yeah. I didn't know if you looked at it. Or I hadn't looked at it, but I was told, and I assume they're telling us. So if we truth. cut it, we're looking at restoring and then setting a salary. I would think Correct. so. What, what have we got in the budget last year? Well, Fourteen thousand, you know, which he equaled out to about a thousand dollars a day. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to step up on this one. Uh, I think we need to step up on this one. I, I, it's just, it's going out of sight. For that, you know, that that much I mean, I'm open on it. It's, it just can't. We just can't fill it with the sheriff's department. I don't right. think. So what are you looking at? Two hundred and fifty dollars a day. That's what they're paying the those people that go up there and do fill in for the bailiffs, I believe. So two fifty. I mean, if he's serving one day a month, so two fifty a day times twelve. Well, you may have another day of serving subpoena, so I'd say two days a month. Okay. Let's say five hundred dollars a month for six thousand. Yeah, if you can get somebody, to take it. I don't know. You can or you can't. I'd take it. Can't, the commissioner can't draw two salaries. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know that to be true. I know that, that that's the law. That's not so we're looking at 6000 Now, do we pay burdens and stuff on that? Will we pay? I don't know. Angela, do you know if we, pay, if we have to pay burdens on that? Will, that go in, will, they, will we pay retirement? And, mm -hmm. <coughs> so and if they're serving less than 28 hours a month, then we don't, they don't get insurance, correct? Judge, do we so need to have some discussions with the district judges or something and find out? I'm going to try to arrive at something with you. Well, <clears throat> code says that the commission court says six thousand. Yeah. So six thousand plus six thousand is fine with you. Fine with me. We're going to add burdens to that or including burdens. Oh, I'd add burdens to it. Yeah. Six thousand plus burdens. That's going to be about seven thousand a year. Yeah. Whatever it comes up. Okay, I guess now is the time to talk about a th what kind of pay increase would be, cost of living increase. On what, the employees? Employees, yes. We've got 3% in, don't we? Right. I'm hanging with three. We were at 3.7, right? Wait, what? 3.7 on the contingency with the 3%. So if we give the three percent, we're at three point seven. Yeah, I mean, right. it's already in there. Yeah. And then and then what major costs are we looking at? What what? 
Any 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 additional major cost that we're looking at that could, that would have to come out of contingency? Well, the only thing that I would throw in and that <clears throat> is when we started this budget process, the four commissioners took three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Then we came back on a second round, and uh, I took fifty thousand. You took twenty five thousand, and I think the sheriff's office took twenty five thousand, didn't they? Okay, so we t we come up with another hundred thousand, and I'm going to propose that we restore that hundred thousand because the time that we made that second offer to come up with a hundred thousand dollars, we thought we were two point five million, and we're going to be pulling down to two point two five million. And if we hold with this, that's taking. 175,000 out of your budget and 150,000 out of my budget. And three years ago, we had taken this same cut. And so I think with the contingency where it is, I'm gonna propose that we put this 50,000 back to my budget, 25 to yours and 25 to the sheriff's. How much to mine? How much did we cut you? You need a 50. In fact, I need some of that money back. <laughs> hey, well, Ben's we, we, we about, about the smallest budget. Why don't I get something back? Well, we we took cuts on the bond. We're we're staying with our first round cuts. I'm taking. Well, we're not there. We're not even talking about those. These were second. You didn't take any second round cuts. No, I took a first round. Cut. Well, I did too. But that's a hundred thousand dollars. We're not talking about that. We're talking about second round cuts. And I realize you put some out of your carryover. But you. don't it count that I added seven, uh, ninety-three thousand dollars more to the budget? I guess it cuts. counts for something, Bobby. You're a good commissioner. Don't, don't, that, <laughs> don't that count? <clears throat> well, I just think on the second round that uh, yeah. you know Chris and I have these big precincts and lots of miles of roads, and uh, it really put us in a bind. But cutting that contingency fund down that low to two and a quarter million dollars was a bind too. Just throwing it out. See if y'all want to be fair. I, I would like to see them restored. I'd like, well, I'd like to see something restored too. It's five thousand bucks. Five thousand. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> Keep going. I'm, teasing. I'm with Bobby. Yeah. I understand what do you why? need, Heather? I mean, you need some. Oh, what? How, much, how much do you need, Bobby? Uh, how much do I need? I, I need that 50000 that y'all took. I don't know what it was on the second round. What did I give up on the second Nothing round? Nothing on the second round. But, but if you hung up first. Everything's on first. Hey, if you hung up <coughs> on 25000 for these answers, I'll take 25000 back. Another one, are you good? So that'd be 50 to Ken, 25 to me, 25 to Sheriff, and 25 to Bobby. 125,000. I got no problem with that. Right. I'm good. That makes me feel better. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, on, on this contingency, so that's, so we're, we're, uh, we're around 3.6. You're all right with it, Sheriff? Sir? I say you're all right with it? Yes, sir. Well, Can we take yeah, that? You, you trade, uh, Two thousand dollars for twenty five thousand back, won't you? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Can we take that twenty three hundred and fifty two out of your twenty five thousand? No, sir. Actually, I was going to ask you to make that thirty for a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so we're at three point six, and then we we got to deal with the mold remediation. I mean, what what do we we look at? Maybe going down to three. Trying or is that our? I mean, I know that's the three is our I, goal. I would leave that. Like it is, it's going to be in next year's budget. Knowing that we're going to need to do something, but we're so far from having any fine figures and stuff right now. I, I don't. I, I don't think we need both to go on that right now. No, I, that think that thing could vary so much. You know, as as to what <coughs> is that all right with you, Judge? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's how it's the first year. <coughs> Okay, it looks okay. like that you're going to be going into contingency by $393,277.15 now. 
Okay, you've already totaled all these up? And what's, what's our contingency going to be now? You're going to reduce it instead of $276,055.66, you're going to reduce it by $393,277.15. And what bottom line is that going to mean on contingency? Leave about three six, don't it? Three three five. Three five, Three million five hundred seventy three thousand six hundred and seven dollars and sixty nine cents. Three million five hundred and seventy three thousand. Five hundred and eighty three thousand. Five hundred and eighty three thousand what? Six oh seven. Okay. <coughs> Judge R. Okay, and we did settle on three percent. Three percent. That's what I thought we settled on. Yeah, okay. This is what I, the adjustments I have, if I can go over them. Um, 2000 back into the county park supplies, um, $857 removed for the district judge employees, $23,426 for the JP clerk, $500 for the treasurer's travel, $7,800 for the treasurer's salary um, for the clerical position for three months. The indigent budget will be reduced by 50000 the dispatchers, $2,352.49, and the bailiff plus benefit is $7,000. Then Commissioner Pelt, um, $50,000, Commissioner Kirkendall, $25,000, the sheriff's $25,000, and Commissioner Franklin, $25,000. Okay, back up to that part. Didn't you say $2,000? Mm -hmm. okay. Because you have $3,000 in there. So we're going to give you $5,000. Five altogether. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Because you have three in there. Okay. Judge. With these corrected figures, are we going to correct this one here now, the 37 back to the 3583? Mm -hmm. Are we going, I don't see any reason to file all these things that are going to be put in as amendments, maybe, but shouldn't we correct this page and refile this with the county clerk's office as a revised cover sheet? That'd be fine. Okay. okay. I think that would present a better picture to the public. As, the only thing that, that the problem is that these adjustments are not voted on. They're not confirmed by the court. They're, they're proposed. 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 Yeah. So well, I, this I, this would be the proposed too. Yeah. This is part of the proposed well, budget. We did vote on that. <coughs> yeah, we did vote on this here. I, I think you know that since the one that we filed is basically two point two five million, this one's so much greater by over a million dollars that it would behoove us to go ahead and file this as a new cover sheet. It would make the next meeting much easier. That's what I was so thinking. Do you Jess. want the whole budget <laughs> No, no, just, 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 just this cover sheet. Okay. Yeah. That's where the interest is. Do we need a motion? No, we can't do it. You can't do it. Or we don't have an action out. <laughs> but since we know that it is been corrected, well, I see nothing wrong with furnishing the public the new information. <coughs> Anything else? <coughs> I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We stand adjourned. Devin, can you stay for a Yes, sir. <coughs> <coughs>